What's going on everybody? Welcome back or welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Mike. And today we're gonna to be talking about specifically the Canic Mete. So this is gonna be the cleaning process is really gonna work for pretty much anything through the Canic line. The Elite, the Elite SC, the Mete, the SFX, the TF, all that stuff is going to be very similar, almost exactly the same between striker fired pistol to striker fired pistol with a few very rare exceptions. So if you are proficient in the striker fire cleaning process, you can probably go to the next video and watch the actual review of this thing, which I will link down below. But if you are here for the first time or you are looking for some instructions on how to properly clean, lubricate, and inspect your overall Canic pistol, you've come to the right place and I appreciate that. So we're not gonna waste any time. We are gonna get right down into the cleaning of this thing. Make sure you guys get subscribed, turn those notification icons on, and of course, leave me a comment on if this was helpful and how you are enjoying your new Canic pistol. We're gonna get into the cleaning of this thing right now. All right, so we are going to get into cleaning our Canic. You'll know, notice that I already have gloves on because as the old high school chemistry teacher would tell you, um, if the chemical is on you, it's in you. So no glove, no love. Remember that, protect yourself. Even though these cleaners we're using today are non-caustic and green, just protect yourself because there are gunpowder and other things in there that are not great for your body. So as far as what I use, I love these lime and cleaning mats because it's gonna save whatever surface you're cleaning things on. A microfiber or an old t-shirt. Uh, I love the Breakthrough Clean stuff. It does a great job and it's not overly priced for the lubrication. I like the Lucas Extreme Duty Gun Oil. It is very good stuff. Couple of patches or a torn up old shirt or pair of underwear, whatever you want to use. These tipped in plastic or polymer picks are great because you're not going to scar any surfaces or cause damage, yet they will help you get into areas you otherwise couldn't. Any nine millimeter cleaning brush and rod, this is just an old Glock one that's laying around. And then just the old kind of military style toothbrush. And I will leave links for all this stuff down below so you can get anything that you need. As far as when we start breaking this down, remember it's always safety first, point it in a safe direction, ensure that the magazine and the feeding device, you should see nothing but air through there, and that the chamber is empty, at which point let the slide go forward, point it in a safe direction, pull the trigger, pull back on the slide, and then down on your takedown levers right here, all the way on both sides, right it forward, and it will come off right about there. So. As far as the frame goes, that is all you're going to do. You're not taking the frame down anymore for a general maintenance cleaning. For the spring, push forward up, pops right out, your recoil spring and guide rod is gone. For the barrel, you're gonna pull up on the lugs forward and then right out the back just like that. So this is your field strip and cleaning. Very simple process from here. We're gonna wipe down, scrub it up and lubricate it out and then we're just gonna put it back together. That's really all it is. I like to start by spraying right here in the barrel, give it one or two squirts right there and let that rest because that's where a ton of our carbon is going to be. For the rest of everything else, I like to spray onto the brush, but begin with just a simple wipe down and this is just gonna get the big chunks off of everything if you've been out at the range. Wipe it down, get all that stuff off. Same thing with the barrel the outside if you got a lot of lubrication or anything because you don't want to run through a ton of patches if you can just wipe it down with this cloth. Same thing here, get up in the slide, wipe it down real good. And don't be, uh, don't be afraid, you're not gonna hurt this thing. Okay, so get in there and put some work into it. Uh, wipe down your recoil spring. And this is just, like I said, get the big stuff off so we can get moving and get it clean. From here on, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the brush put a squirt or two on the brush, and we're going to concentrate on the areas right here, rails, the vertical extensions of the trigger bar and the inside of the trigger bar, rails on the rear, across the top, and across our locking block. Okay, so spraying a couple squirts on the brush is gonna give you plenty of material to work with. Get down in this area in here, around that trigger, around your slide stop, slide release, clean all of those areas out because that's where carbon likes to go across the top other rail section and ensure that this locking block is really clean and good to go no chunks of carbon and that is really all we're going to do with the frame again 
require your microfiber, wipe all that stuff off. And this is, like I said, you can do this to your heart's content. You might need to do this once. You might need to do this twice. If you're into having super clean stuff, you might do this five times. It all depends on how much it's been fired and how dirty it is. I will say run a towel or a patch or whatever you have up into the mag well to clear out any additional liquid that you may have gotten up in there, but be careful of your ejector right here and don't get your towel caught on that. That is going to be it for cleaning out the frame. As far as the slide goes, we're gonna do the same thing. A couple squirts of that cleaner right there on the brush. And we're gonna to wanna to pay close attention up into the rails across the top here and up in right there where you'll see the barrel meets the top of that slide. And then right there, that flat surface right here, which is called the breech face. And it's the same thing. Get that brush up in there. You're not gonna hurt this thing. And just start scrubbing all around that stuff, especially up in the rails where they meet the frame. And then up in that guide rod hole right there. It's where a lot of oil usually likes to rest. And again, you do this until you feel comfortable or that you have cleaned it enough. So as far as the outside, you don't really need to spray any cleaner on that. Again, just wipe off the big stuff right here. We will do a little bit more in a minute with the picks and the patches, and I'll show you that here in a second. We just wanna get all of the big stuff off. Guide rod and recoil spring assembly, just wipe it off. You don't need to put any chemicals or any agents on there. Um, it doesn't get really crazy dirty, so just kinda wipe that down, leave it as is. Dealing with the barrel, you're gonna wanna obviously make sure the feed ramps, the whole bore area is very clean. Check the lugs down here inspect this, make sure there's no cracks, no chunks, anything missing. And that just goes for everything. If you've got a ton of carbon buildup around here, you can spray the outside of the barrel. But again, I like to spray the brush because it's usually gonna give you everything you need. And then you can put it right here and pick up the extra off the table and clean this thing out. Ensuring that those lugs are good and everywhere in the corners because that's generally where things like to get dirty is up in these corner areas. Okay, now once you feel good there, give it a good wipe down and we'll deal with actually cleaning the bore here down the barrel. Gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna spray the tool, not the part. And we're just gonna go right through, all the way through. So don't go halfway and pull out. Go all the way through and then all the way back out, just like that. And just do that as many times as you think you need to, to clean that out. Good five, maybe six times, you're probably gonna be good to go. Go ahead and remove the cleaning brush get a patch and we're gonna run patches through this until we feel it's as clean as we want it. So run it all the way through, run it all the way back. I'll use the same patch maybe a couple times and then change it out and see once we get one that comes out pretty clean, then we're gonna be good to go. These things don't need to be inspector general style clean, they just need to be functionally clean. So we can see there that that patch is looking pretty good. So we are gonna call it a day on the barrel. And now let's talk about our lubrication points. So the manual tells you that you wanna lubricate the sides of the barrel, the sides of the inside of the frame where the barrel meets it, the rails both inside the slide, on the frame and the inside of the ejector. So we're just going to put right here, we're gonna put a drop of oil across the hood right there, a drop of oil across the barrel. And that's really all you need. There's not much there. And just rub that all the way around. And that is going to ensure 
that everywhere that needs oil has a little bit of oil on it. Now you can use a little bit more than that, but that's really all that it's going to need. Just enough to give that metal a tiny little sheen. That is all you need on there. Now, when it comes to cleaning out the rest of the slide, if you really want to get into, you know, the, the nitty gritty and really clean things to the next extent, get your patch, get these picks, run it up and down the rails like this, and you can do this forever, trust me, and you can get a ton of stuff coming out forever. Clean that up in there, do whatever you want. That's if you want to go to that next level, and you can see you'll have some pretty decent stuff coming out of there still. You can do the same thing down in here. You can run that patch in this area, get down in here prior to lubrication, just for those kind of final cleaning things if you wish. If not, what you're gonna do is take and put a drop of oil on each rail, just like that. Just one drop. Drop across your locking block here. And then just go ahead and rub that in and kind of pull up on it like this so it gets under the rail. Rub it on there. Rub it across the trigger bar on those contact areas. Canix manual says to do that to the trigger bar right here on those rails and then across the inside of that ejector just like that and your sear contact surface which is right there. You can see where it's kind of that shiny spot you get a little bit of oil right across that. That is going to be it for your frame. When it comes down to the rails, you're gonna put a drop of oil in each rail right there, right there, right here, right there. Now you can't really get your finger in there when you wanna do that, but you can kind of work just a little bit on the edge that's really going to be put in there once you get the slide back on there. And then you're going to want to put a drop of oil right there on the inside and work that around because that is where the barrel on the top and on the sides is going to be making all of that contact. That is pretty much it. We're just going to do our reassembly now. Your barrel, recoil spring and guide rod. Put it back on, ensure we do our functions check, which is make sure it's clear, pull the trigger, hold it to the rear, pull back, resets. So we now know we are good to go. Canik also says that you can put um, a light coating of oil on the outside of this if you want. There's gonna be enough on your hand or your glove if you just kind of rub back and forth to get it on there and then just remove it with your towel. And that should be a completely clean Canic pistol for you and you're ready to go for that next range trip. Well, I really hope that was helpful and you guys got your Canic good to go and really clean. A couple of things you need to really pay attention to. Do not over lubricate or put lubrication where it doesn't belong. That can cause a lot of serious problems with your pistol. Now the type of oil you wanna use and the cleaning products is going to be completely up to you. All of that stuff that I used today was good stuff. If you want to use a single stage CL plea, that's a cleaner lubricator and protectant, you can do that as well. I have found that in Arizona in drier climates, CLP is just not the best. It's better to use a two stage product and uh, clean it with one and then lubricate it and protect it with the second stage. Um, you people in maybe a little bit of a less dry climate might have better luck with that. That's just been my experience. So you guys get out there, enjoy that new Canic pistol. Make sure you do your cleaning and inspections pretty much after every range trip. Not in depth, but at least wipe it down, lube it up, and then every couple of range trips or every few hundred rounds, definitely do an in-depth cleaning and inspection. Subscribe, like the video, leave me a comment down below, get out there and have some fun. And remember, if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready, and I will see you guys on the next one.